Yeah. Readjust the hat. Yeah, we're good. All right, we're good. Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Jim Walmsley before the 2017 Western States 100. Hey, how are you, Jim? Doing great. How are you? All right. We've been chatting a bunch. 2014 Speed Goat 50K bit, just yeah. came up. So let's walk things back three years. It was three years? That's crazy. Um, it's uh, just yeah. shy of three years ago. Could you have seen this situation? You're running the, <laughs> the media, all of this when you were, you know, jumping into Speed Goat. No, at the three time years ago. I saw maybe getting out of the Air Force in May 2017. So that would have projected me a lot differently. Um, yeah, more or less, we'll keep it at the short answer of no. I didn't see myself being here for sure. Well, here you are, and you are the odds on favorite for this weekend's race. What does yeah. that feel like? It's odd, uh, but at the same time, embracing it, and that's how I see it in my mind. So, um, just owning it, living it, enjoying it. Um, that's all you really can do. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. That stuff's not in my control. I don't care about it. I don't worry about it. Uh, other than that, I'm out here to have a good time. Do you think some people will uh, try to go roll with you early in the race? And can they? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, you're pacing it for 100 miles. Mm -hmm. you got to make it 100 miles. So uh, at a 100-mile pace, a lot of people can hang for a little bit. Um, I think some people might go, even even some people we don't see finishing in the top 30 sort yeah. of thing. Of like, I ran with him for so many miles and then, um, but I think the longer people try to go with me, they're going to get dropped at some point and that's going to leave them more in an isolated situation. I think it's going to be worse off. Of you like, like the Mano Amano situation? Just like well, I think, I think dropping them... 20 miles by themselves right before Robinson Flat is a great play or Duncan Canyon um, is great of like you're on your own buddy like you don't even have a chase pack like yeah um, so that'll be tough uh, I think more realistically what could be ha what could happen and what would be most dangerous is if a chase pack chilled and found a good rhythm and found a good conservative pace and maybe of where like if I did slip up late they're close enough and they've worked they fed off of a, each other enough where they, they could one of them could have a good day and then make a break from that to close it but at some point i mean yes i'm gonna go out probably at a good pace where it's gonna be record pace from the start and it's gonna be uh this and that and someone's gonna have to close that gap and my more than likely it's someone's gonna have to close it by themselves and mm -hmm. How long do they wait before they think they can close that by themselves and uh, um, really like actually do something with it? Uh, I just, yeah, I'm gonna bet against that, and I don't see it happening. Who but. do you think could hang with you the longest? Well, we talked more about likely. it. Well, I mean, <laughs> Eli from Sweden is like totally most impulsive. Of, like <laughs> he seems like he wants to like run with 10 miles, but I also see him finding like a smarter pace to run at. Mm -hmm. um, he likes uh, to talk smack, but... He's a fun guy. I mean, yeah, I like Elov. So, um, that, but I think when you look at this field in general, uh, we've talked about odds on favorite, but at the same time, you talk about next 10. This is a really deep men's race. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really deep men's race. And then you also look at the tactics that people race at. It's also a really deep field in the fact that there's a lot of racers that race patiently mm -hmm. and smart. And so when you're playing, when you have now five to ten guys of playing the really safe, smart card, it's like, how's that dynamic going to work out? It worked out well last year. It worked out really well last year, but um, you're welcome. But at the same time, like, uh, no, I mean, like, how th how they're going to differentiate mm. be between their own strategies and stuff. Uh, yeah, I think um, Alex Nichols, I don't think, is getting enough talked about odds on got to be odds on he's undefeated in hundreds uh he's always some fa some way found his dark horse role in races and it's like he finishes podium every time like he's a grinder and he crushes uh chris mock has obviously been very public and uh has put in some great weeks uh and he, he's put in by single weeks any bigger like bigger weeks than any single one of mine mm -hmm. um and then Eli's been out there. Uh, and then there's like this 
really fast guys who are also really yeah, smart and steady, like you Jonas Jeff, Bood. Like Jonas Bood, uh, Browning. Browning. You can throw Charmin in there. How Ryan Sands with a 1502 PR at Western States isn't getting more love. I mean, when you start going 10 deep and you start trying to narrow it down to 10 people, you're like, you're, are you leaving big names off of top 10? You're like, top 10 is actually going to be a bit trickier this year. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Now, you have some pretty audacious goals for yourself. You've stated yeah. them publicly. Going for 14 yeah. hours. Like, do you have any sense to mitigate them with the, you know, it's going to be slushy snow. It's going to be pretty darn hot. You do on the heat, but it still it could be 101. Like, uh, yeah. any thoughts well, of that? Yeah, it's going to be hot for sure. Um, if anything, that's probably what I see as being the biggest factor. Mm -hmm. uh, I know training weekend and generally just running on slow snow and running most of it's going to be downhill running on snow is like besides escarpment yeah. um and that one's going to be all tracked out anyway so uh i don't see the snow being too big of a deal because you run snow downhill and you're gliding and it's pretty fast though it's not but a that, big deal that heat is a limit um that's a what the, the heat. heat yeah i don't know i love the heat and i'm gonna crush the heat so i i i think so comparatively heat i think does bring the time down yeah. a bit how far i don't know um, but I think personally, my opinion of comparing me to other racers in the heat, that gives me an astronomical advantage of like, I'm really good racer in the heat. I've been racing in the heat, heat, heat since high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I've gotten in just a killer heat block for this race specifically. And I couldn't be happier with how some of my runs and efforts have been in air in Phoenix. So, uh, yeah, I mean, my hottest training one was 122. It's trailhead. not going to be that hot. It's not going to be that hot. And I think the funny thing was I actually got a post of like looking forward to the cooler weather in the canyons out at uh, Western State. So, I mean, literally that is the case. It's it's not going to get worse than what I already know. Gotcha. Sure. So no sense of just uh, with the heat, yeah. backing it down and, well, you know, really aiming for the win in particular rather than just a fast time. I mean, more than that, I think it's I'm better at recognizing what's happening, how hot it is and so if you need to staying, slow down you will staying within that comfort zone yeah. it, it's it's 100 miles it's all about the comfort zone i mean it's a 100 mile race racing at 93 miles and something happening or racing it however far and popping isn't the goal mm -hmm. the goal isn't to run a fast time through forest hill the goal is to run the fastest 100 mile at western states ever so, so if you're crushing just, cal street and all of a sudden you're like i'm kind of feeling a little shaky because the heat you might back off the gas a little. a little bit once you get to the cow streets i think it's kind of i mean everybody's in a hurt hole there yeah. so um you got to take it with a little more grain of salt that late in the race but uh yeah i i don't know you you, you gotta you gotta judge it for yourself and you gotta know yourself now part of running 100s is kind of error mitigation and you had a couple last year yeah. i mean trying to make the swim getting lost you know running with oh, a pace your, running. your commentary on the video makes it the worst <laughs> for, for the thing of like being in the moment i didn't think it was that bad but people like man you almost got swept down it did not look good it was almost you're gonna die and this and that i was like you know i actually felt okay in control and like for like uh perspective sakes i was still trying to swim when the guy two feet away from me was standing of like, I had this thing in my mind of wanting to stay below the water and yeah. staying focused on staying cool that way that I forgot like, oh, you're in the kiddie pool. You can stand up now. Yeah. And that was like the little embarrassing, like you stand up, you look around, like everyone's looking at you. So you just pretend you're not there and like you just move forward. Um, so I don't think it was too big of a deal. I think by the time, like some of the parts where I looked like I was struggling most is like, you could have stood up and walked it to the shore. You know that, right? Like, it was fine. Yeah. Not but you did deal. get lost, and your pacer, you had a pacer who was sick, and you ended yeah. up rolling with that. Yeah, yeah. So, there, there are things. So, and, like... I mean, even before that, things happened, and... Yeah. I mean, to start the day, I had a 500-calorie pack that I forgot to clip around my waist to start the race. So, that was part of the reason why, even, like, once I crested Escarpment and Watson Monument, I started just running my pace into lion's ridge because it's like i gotta make up a little bit of time so i have time to eat at the aid station because i didn't bring the food i meant to bring so how what have you done ahead of this year's race you had a year since then and you've had yeah. a, what have you done to like cut those out because they do have an impact on yeah an, an so my race the the learning lesson from last year was just the biggest thing is make redundancy in your plan um the more redundant your race plan can be and fallback 
alternate plans and carrying a little extra calories if something doesn't happen. I mean, this year I've been training on Cliff Bar stuff, so Cliff Bar stuff is actually at the aid stations. Um, there, there's all sorts of stuff built into my race plan this year that's gonna be more redundancies. I got three pacers instead of just one. Um, and I might even register a fourth as just another backup. Mm -hmm. uh, so th there's just more redundancy. So you have built that into it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. You've made some changes to the, yeah, the yeah. overarching structure. Yeah, of because your... it's just not worth having mistakes that cost you a race. Yeah. Um, it's mistakes are inevitable and they're going to happen, but it's more important to not let those mistakes alter or affect your overall race. Yeah. Now. How has your training gone? You had a really good block last year, and then you had this year Tarawira yeah. and uh, Gorges. But yeah. how's your training been since then? Well, since like so for Tarawira at the time, I thought Tarawira was a better training block than I did for Western States last year. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Tarawira that I actually tried doing 140 mile weeks again and tough training again. So in Tarawira, just couldn't have gone better. It was really, really awesome. Um, and then. I've never done a training block like this for Western States. Um, it's even been extra hard because I've kept, although everything's focused on Western States, there was a lot more climbing in this block as a whole, even um, for my race in Spain, Carrera Alto Seal, of uh, doing 20,000 foot week climbing uh, mm -hmm. things of just in that block, just to get ready for the next block. And then this block had in mind the next block of UTMB. Like, so last year I didn't have anything on the schedule after Western States. And it was just like, I'll bounce back when I bounce back. Mm -hmm. This year it's like, I gotta bounce back in a certain way. Um, you still gotta play it by ear and gotta listen, but um, there's the in mind of, I wanna do UTMB with more climbing. So there was a lot more climbing this year. I think that's gonna make me a lot stronger in the high country. And then even looking at overall all time splits, like the high country is really where like, I threw it down a lot last year, so to think I'm a bit stronger this year on the high country is going to be good and confidence inspiring, but yeah, I've never strung together three weeks over 140 miles like this week, and then all of them at least 27,000 feet of climbing, so... Uh, not too slow. <laughs> no, no, I still do fast runs. Um, some of my biggest runs this year, or this training block, have been 18-miler. Uh, I got to do one of my goal life goals of hang with Ab Yadnaran for a long run in Flagstaff yeah. for an 18 mile long run. I think we average like 547 uh, on really rolling hills. Um, I'm just lucky that Abdi started out with us and relatively slow because other days, most days Abdi like starts out six flat and gone. I'm like, I need to warm up a little bit. Like <laughs> give me a mile or two, come on man. And then, uh, but then I also did a good run on A1 mountain loop out there. Um, so, so you're overall feeling fitter maybe yeah. than last year and and then i mean now you always kind of get a little bit of self-doubts with your taper you kind of question but like i was having self-doubts like four days after probably my best run of my whole training block at a1 of like man but you just get like uh short-term memory loss and you're like you worked out four days ago and you crushed it like dude you're fine nice. so it's just trust the process trust the taper trust that you're okay and Things will be like just that's the biggest thing that I can totally draw off of. Of after Western States last year, it's like I don't know if I could literally do this race again. But since then, with JFK, Tarawera, Gorge, and stuff, you look at it like again and again now. It's like I've had that magical day show up on race day when I need it. So yeah. um, maybe you'll have another one. It, of those? You just draw confidence off of it'll be there, and nice. just trusting that for sure. Now. You do a lot of training. I mean, 140 mile weeks back to back is like, that's a lot of training. Do you do anything outside of running to keep yourself healthy? Uh, I do weights with Hypo2 in town on Wednesdays. It's been less this block because I've been doing so much climbing. Um, outside of that, a good healthy amount of going out with friends, having beer and trying to keep stress levels low. Uh, gotcha. I, I say this again and again about no matter what your situation is, life and performance wise, or whether performance is in your running, job, family, uh, whatever you put your efforts in, it's all stress management. And to do well in your performances, you need to stress manage everything going on. And something that's been great this year is being able to like keep the rest of life pretty chill, yeah. which allows me, I think, to take on a bit bigger blocks, a bit bigger training. Um, so. 
Yeah, I, I, I've never done a training block like this for Western States. Or oh. like like this. For an ultra? For, for, for in my running career. Gotcha. Um, so it's been pretty awesome. For now, sure. I mean, this kind of training level you're you're at, like, how long do you see that as possible, like, overall? Because, yeah. like, in terms of longevity. Like. Um, I feel pretty healthy with it. I have been avoiding injuries. Uh, which is the biggest part of it. Yeah. You talk about career-wise, it's avoiding injuries is probably the biggest thing as far as making big improvements. Um, I feel pretty confident with my, what I probably would say, like ebbs and flows of downtime, hard times, and like taper time is part of your downtime. It's part of what's going to make me more fresh to do the block for a UTMB after this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also taking the proper time after the race. And then Training blocks are supposed to be hard. Training blocks scare me more than the race itself. To be prepared for the race, the training required to hurt that bad is a lot harder work than, a lot more hard work than uh, a lot of times the race. And the fact that you need to come in prepared to, to battle. And uh, um, so balancing those training blocks, I think I do really well with uh, ebbs and flows and taking down weeks and stuff. And do you to do, do any of that like, sort of is it all planned out or if you sort of feel yourself getting a little flat or yeah, having I mean, a couple bad days even, you even this training block like starting out the first hundred mile week i was supposed to hit um i actually uh was shooting film and some hoka people came out and it was a really stressful week i was supposed to hit 100 miles it only ended up being a, uh 90 miles yeah. and i ended up cutting 10 miles off of it and just saying screw it like i can't do it that actually ended up being the most stressful and hardest week, I think, of the entire hmm. block. Of like, um, yeah, and it, it just goes to how you can manage it yourself and you need to have just less stressful down weeks. And if you can do that, I think you can handle the big blocks in like in between the de-stress. So it's for every up and down, I mean, every mountain needs a valley and yeah. you, you, it's all got to balance out. And I think that's just going to prove to be longevity. Now, in terms of stress, like you're, try to manage your overall stress with hanging out with your friends and it sounds like you do a good job of tempering your running when you need to now this whole thing we have like yeah four cameras and a mic and all of this like, yeah this isn't my typical i run far interview so no, far well we just got the one camera going so but well, uh, that's the typical one but the surrounding parts yeah, yeah but like crazy. this and like there's states weekend you there's know? like you know so many podcasts and videos yeah. and movies coming out and all the Hoka meeting up with you and all these things like how do you yeah. manage what is an entirely new well it, obligation it, it, I mean it definitely started to become pretty hard um, but something that kind of changed my mindset on it and outlook is it's also become the biggest difference from doing all of that this year compared to last year is this year's my job last yeah. year I had a job this year running is my job and you know what I'm really fortunate for that and doing that part and dedicating that time like you know what an hour podcast isn't that bad compared to an eight ten hour week or or sorry not week day and then going home to children like there's other competitive racers that do that every single day five days a week uh sort of thing like and they're competitive and it's balancing so um i don't know you, you need to do it i think sometimes i need a mental break from it all I need to disconnect from the social media side of it. Which you've done the last couple of days, you say? Yeah, I've let Mike Hermsmeyer kind of take over stuff, and sorry I'm not responding to everybody right now. Uh, hopefully I'll go back and look at it, but I have completely logged out of everything. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I think with the, the film that came out this week with Nine Mine Asylum and the guys doing that, uh, and then the podcast uh, with Eric Schranz, um, that stresses me probably out more than anything, um, going into some of those personal times. And, and how do you deal with that? Because uh, you could just be quiet yeah, about it. And like no, more times than not, you, you're a little more ignorant about it. You, you forget about it. You focus on other things in life. And you, try, you, you don't think about it as much. Mm -hmm. um, but the more I do think about that stuff, the more emotional I get, the more that resurfaces. And... No, yeah, on Tuesday this week, it was weird. I'm like, I got the biggest race of my life coming up and I'm in a complete mental funk thinking about three, four years ago. And it's like, that's weird. And I, I actually like, 
went downstairs and like my parents asked me a question. I'm like, I just gotta go for a walk. And I went for a walk for like 20 minutes, just down in Phoenix at night around 10 p.m. and stuff. And it was just like, I don't know. And it was like, that's when I unplugged. And I'm like, I, I, I don't want to respond to these deeper questions, these deeper, really, really close friends that mean a lot to me, but maybe I haven't talked to in five, even 10 years. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that have reached out to me from that film, and I'm sorry for not getting back, but um, right now I need to focus on me. I need to focus on being happy, being stress-free, and the race on Saturday and, and doing that. And yeah. it's, it's just, yeah, you, it's stress management. That's how I'm doing it. I'm cutting it out. I'm just snipping it out. And it's like, I can't worry about it. I can't do it. And I'll pick it up when this isn't as much. And you know what? After this, I'm escaping out to Silverton where there's no cell phone service. So it still might be for a Heck while. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going out to Hard Rock for the third year in a row. And yeah, we... <laughs> I don't know. It'll feel good. Let's see. Yeah. Let's go and relax then, in the in the San Juan. <laughs> yeah, it's just a way. Uh, and we got funny camping plans out there and stuff. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's good. Um, so Saturday, yeah. Western states. Yep. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, but having a goal of say setting a course record, if 14 hours setting a course record or winning, can you know cut into one or the other, like. Yeah. If you had to choose one, that would mean the most. Anyway, we'll say the third like one again. We, you know, winning. running 14 okay. out, sub 14, out of setting any, a course record of, or winning. Like out of any of those, I would pick winning. Yeah. No matter what. So if you have to... I mean, if, well, if, if you win in 14.30 and... Or no, sorry, sorry. You run 13.40 and you get the course record, but you got beat by a 14.28. You still don't have the course record. So um, I would say sub 14 is mutually, like, it's gonna you, you'll everything. accomplish everything. Yes. Um, Course, but you have to go course, for that. Like you might have to push harder and then yeah, risk yeah. blowing so, up. So you're so, not racing for top 10 by going um, for sub that, 14, yeah. for sure. Um, you are risking on the course being marked well. You're, re you're, you're, you're banking on your cognizance being there to read the course. Because <laughs> um, that was basically the case last year. I'm sure like everything was marked fine and stuff. And it was just like cognizantly, like I wasn't in the zone looking for the turn and I blew past it. Um, so... There, there's a lot has to go right for a, a sub 14 and even like the weather I'm not totally sure of but at the same time uh, yeah the splits I've drawn out are for 1351 so um, yeah we'll see that gives me time to go to the bathroom and lounge around at the aid stations a little bit more but how I view that is uh, last year off of those splits I was five minutes slow to 16 I blame that on my climb up to escarpment. I was three minutes behind on Devil's thumb climb. That guy might have ran it a little too fast. Uh, so I think that might be a little ambitious. And then Rob Carr has tradition, especially in 2015, ran. Uh, so those splits for 1351, first off, come from the fastest splits ever. For every segment. Run for every single segment independently of it doesn't matter who it was. Mm -hmm. But one thing is I have actually the majority of them before mile 80. Um, so comparing last year to this year heat wise is pretty similar training wise is better this year heat training is better this year um why shouldn't i be able to run the same splits as last year mm -hmm. and i think then you got to hope that you have enough gas to the way tim olsen rob carr and then uh, the gyms the gyms but one of the gyms has a 56 minute highway 49 on in uh split but uh the way they have closed is insane and part of it, I think, is a bit more slow start. Mm -hmm. I think I view it as in those are going to be the hardest splits, and you're not going to know until you get there of how much you really got. I hope to be competitive with those splits, and that's what's going to put me competitive to a sub-14. Um, but other than that, like, I, I mean, I, I was on really good pace, comfortable pace. I was happy with last year, and I'm going to go off of pretty similar splits as last year. So, uh it's really mile 80 on of we'll see what's left um, but if you had to choose that's going to be the difference between sub 14. i mean out of all those three winnings okay. hands down yep. yeah Win winning winning is the most important if you, have, if you have day, to adjust things yeah at the so end of the day nobody can take away a western states win from you someone's going to get the, the course record from you uh so someone's going to get a sub 14 from you if that's the course record but a win you have a win forever well best for of sure. luck out there Jim. yeah thanks so much thank you thanks so much is 
still the ponytail. Yeah, it's coming back. Which one is that? The ponytail's coming back? Yeah. Dude, I, I was so close to cutting my hair before this. Brian, so, like so, whatever, close. yeah, whatever Dude, looks good. the first interview was with you with a shaved head. Back in 2014? We've gone right back, yeah. And Are we rolling there, Trappy? He's a 4 miler doing speed right. goat. 